It is a new day at Daisy Center, a place where hundreds of orphans know as home, a place where they draw their happiness. Today, there is a celebration. <laughs> For example, you look at the A6. I call them the abandoned six. They don't have any other home. They don't know any other parent. They don't know any other uncle or aunt. This is where they know is home. Among these children is a nine-month-old Gladwell. Gladwell joined Daisy Center family not long ago. Her mother succumbed to cancer six months after she was born. It is a story that Caroline Daisy Ashiono relates with so well. Being an orphan herself, she understands the challenges of an orphan child in Kenya. And when we hear me say a house, it was, it was old, falling apart. And there are times when we would be in bed and it starts raining, she had a polythene bag that she would pull over and cover ourselves with. So that at least we can continue sleeping as it rains. The journey of establishing an orphanage and school, now Daisy Center School Bukura, started in 2013. I remember I had only 50,000 in the account only but here I am I want to start an orphanage and a school so now I have acquired this piece of land and the piece of land the money from it had taken from our welfare group what do I do whom do I talk to and the solution was bank. So I went to the bank. Ashiona, who is a proud mother of five of her own, is a mother to hundreds of orphans and abandoned children who keep knocking at her door each passing day. On a 50 by 100 plot with a two Mabati structure she had acquired through a loan, Daisy Center in School Bukura was born. And in those two rooms, the teachers were staying in it, two teachers that were taking care of the children, and the children are also staying in it. The school is situated at the heart of Bukura village, a beacon of hope, light in the silent village of Bukura. The life with my grandmother. One thing she taught me, and I always miss, I miss her for those reasons, humility. The school that doubles as an orphanage has over 100 orphans with a school population of 578 and continues receiving more. We have children. All of them are in uniform. And it's not easy to tell who is an orphan and who has parents. Number one, the reason why we decided to bring even those that have parents on board is so that these other ones can feel like you know they are also children just like the others the school's principal christine aswani says supporting these kids education is their main priority we look at the abilities of learners not all of them have the same ability. There are those ones who will be able to uh, uh, do uh, things in agriculture, plant crops and uh, appreciate. There are those ones who may not be able to go to the farm, but they are able to do some cooking and all that. That's why we have home science, we have agriculture, art and craft, and then we have music. There are those who will be, uh, be very happy to maybe participate in a dance. There are those who will be, uh, be able to join a team, a football team. The kids here are disciplined and show a great deal of respect to their teachers. This way of life is deeply rooted in her way of parenting. You learn something, you do it practically, you involve your parents, you involve the teachers and your friends, the peers and all that. 
They say it takes a village to raise a child and school management through learners have changed the stereotypes and perceptions of the entire community about giving. Once who have parents now share, they look at their friend and they'll go back home and say, Mom, I want one pair of uniform to go to my friend. Mm -hmm. Parents have come here and say, I want to see so and so, I want to see and so and so. The children share. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Another one removed shoes in class. Said, Where are these shoes? Those are yours. Don't use slippers. So when they got home, the parents are like, Where did you? No, I gave them out. Why did you give out your shoes without asking? Mom, you are there, you can buy me shoes. That one doesn't have parents. The mother could not say anything. So those parents came here, now this is a different parent. Say, I want to do something. Allow us to do something. Our child has taught us. Here, the desire to learn is evident. Every school is good, but Daisy School stands out. We have the administration building, we have the classrooms, we have the dining hall, we have dormitory one for boys, dormitory two for girls, the lately done, and it's perfectly finished. Then we have an orphanage. And we have a number of programs, feeding program, and the program for the kids, for the less fortunate. Other than that, we also have activities. We do some small scale farming. We do our own crops. And because of the CBC, it also helps the children uh, with agriculture. Um, I'll show you where they do the rabbits, the chicken. We have cows also. We don't buy milk now. The cows are giving us milk. Because of good results posted each year, the school has an influx of pupils, hence train on available resources. So the school currently sits on a three-acre piece of land. And we are hoping in the near future, if we can get at least three, four, five acres, at least five acres so that we may pro produce our own food, may grow our own maize, beans, on a large scale, we would also be very, very grateful. With competence-based curriculum, government gave direction for each primary school to have at least a junior secondary school to be able to absorb the 2023 double intake. With the first cohort of pupils expected to join junior secondary school next year, Daisy Center doesn't have classrooms yet. With the CBC, there's a lot of expenses. We may need to have enough space and there's, there's a piece of land just after our school which is being sold. We would like to have that. I don't know when, I don't know how, but if anyone would be touched, it would really help us. We also need some classrooms for junior secondary school and senior because now same children, taking them elsewhere would be more expensive. We are already struggling. So they graduate from, you know, Daisy School, you look for junior, secondary, you look for senior. I mean, we cannot afford it. And we want them to keep going because our end goal is to see them graduated and able to face the world. If possible, take them to college so that when they are done, they are able to, you know, find their own jobs. As Sony says, if CBC is implemented to the latter, it may be a solution to unemployment in the country. CBC is really clarifying to us that different talents can be picked and then put together and that child comes up with a career. As we move them to a junior secondary school, we'll be able to know 
who is good at what. And then from there, we also guide the parents according to the talents of the, of the child. There are those children who may not be able to do well in, in languages, but in sciences, they're very good. So we are also having science uh, uh, room in the school where we have all types of materials that um, are equivalent to whatever they are supposed to learn in science. Despite challenges, Ashiono relentlessly soldiers on. Someone asks, why do you keep taking and taking? If I don't, who will? If you don't, who will? It's us to do it. Why do we wait? The children are in need of clothes. They're in need of beddings. We don't have enough beds. We don't have enough mattresses. We don't have enough blankets. I mean, it's a struggle, but we continue. We will not give up. This is center and school's mission is to develop self-disciplined, confident and compassionate individuals who live and lead with integrity. Our learners get the best because our teachers are very committed and we give what we feel our learners deserve. The first ones we began with are one has joined Kenyatta University doing nursing, another one is doing economics, Another one is taking uh, accounting. Um, another one is teaching. I mean, just a number of children that I look at and I feel like, hmm, I'll keep going. This is good. One has to fill in the missing sounds. Fill in the missing sounds. The school aims to provide a happy, stimulating, well-rounded educational experience for children from a wide range of backgrounds and outlooks in beautiful surroundings. Uh, in our school, we take part in co-curricular activities. We take acti uh, part in football. Uh, we also take part in athletics. We also take part in um, um, music, uh, drama. Someone said dreams are real and yours is not different. History is not changed by wishes, discussions, or self-pity, but by people that dare to believe. Those who believe in God know that miracles do happen. I never anticipated, I never, I never even thought that this place could look like this, but Heavenly Father knew. If we can have a special account, we don't even have to touch it. But just a special account fixed for when these children will be of age, either to go to high school, they can use it. Because today they can have food, tomorrow they need to go to school. They don't have an uncle and aunt. But they have the Heavenly Father who talks to, you know, does things, talks to them, talks to us and provides for them through us. But are we, are we open to being used by Heavenly Father to touch others? It all started as a dream, then a chain structure. With the will, the zeal, and the help of well-wishers, you and I, it will culminate to a dream school for all. It is possible. Volunteers, I would love them to just come. Come by, visit them, encourage the children, encourage the girls. I have been looking and praying to, to talk to a number of people. Manu Chandaria, Chachio, Julie Gishuru. I mean, just want to talk to them, for them to help us spread the word. That in this small village, Bukura village, there is a need 
and one, two, three people can unite and do something bigger. Let's stand with Daisy Center and School Bukura. Let's support in our small way. I love what I do. And I cry good tears, not bad tears. You know, when you have total fulfillment, that is my wealth.